Thanks, Rick. Go ahead, Lou. Oh, man, thank you so much. Okay. God, it feels like forever. Um, thanks for hosting a, a fun space. Um, I have uh, one question that doesn't have anything really to do with this. I'm just curious about you in this time period of the 1980s. And then I have one very serious UFO question, if that's okay. Um, the first is I've heard stories about, <laughs> and God, I wish I was there. I've heard stories about John Lear, Bob Lazar, George Knapp, and you partying your asses off. Is there any fun stories that you could tell us about you guys hanging out and maybe some trouble you got into? Because I, I, when I see you, Rick, I, I think to myself, fuck, I bet that guy was insanely fun to hang out with when he was in his prime. So do you have any fun like stories like that? Well, I never party with Z Lazar. <laughs> I met him once in person at a UFO convention, so that's... What about uh, Knappen and, um, and Lear? Well, um, I'll just say that uh, we, we went out uh, a few times. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> yes! Oh, you 1980s! Oh, my God. Okay, so you guys were probably doing... Uh, a little bit of the Bolivian snow round, huh? They're, okay, I don't answer that, Rick. You don't have to. <laughs> I, I get it. Um, but man, fuck, dude, I would love to one day just. I would love to just talk about those parties. Um, this the very other real question I had. Ever since you've mentioned these uh, races of aliens, um, I looked into a couple of them, and I honestly got some hitbacks on. Um, uh, I think it was the Evans or one of those that had um, that there were some crash sites in Alaska. Have you heard anything like that, or do you know anything about that? Yeah, there were. Uh, yeah, there were crash sites in Alaska for uh, a couple of those species, uh, two different species, and two different crash sites, and two, two different time periods. Wow, you know. I hate to break this to you, man. I completely made that up. Well, I tell you, one was at Nome in 1971 at Tin City Air Force Station. And the other one was, I have it right here. And the other one was found in the field uh, two miles inside the Canadian border uh, east of Isleson Air Force Base. The craft that the craft that crashed at that location was 1966 and had been there probably for a number of years. It, they found it during the uh, thawing. So I don't know if you're pulling my leg or you're just lying. But yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I just could. I could. I, I because the reason why I did that, Rick. I don't. Are I don't you a psychic? Are you experiencer? I am. Yeah, actually, I am. I did experience them when I was 13. Uh, but what I've found since I've been researching this a lot is people will tell you anything they want you to hear and believe. And you know, so when I hear the stories about, you know, all of this classification, but then you turn around and you start talking about races and stuff like that and how they're 100 percent real. But there's no there's no there's no paperwork that proves any of this stuff and man like again i would i man if i could have a time machine and i could go back to 1986 and party with you guys i think i'd have a really great time but it just you know when you when you cite gaia as like some kind like they're not a news organization they don't do heavy fact checking there that's not a place of like an institution of you know, where people go to for facts and truth, it's an entertainment channel. That was a, uh, is that it? <laughs> Gaia, Gaia's yeah, watched okay, by, well, okay, one more question. Gaia's watched Gaia, by about a million people, okay, around the world, okay, so 
Yeah. Exactly. Okay, just one last question. More. You were transferred to Germany in nineteen. You were transferred to Germany in nineteen eighty four. Um, can you tell us why? A lot of investigations on the people they bring in there, and they learned that from the Corey Good. And I came in after Corey Good, so they do do it. So let's go to the next question. You've already answered. Asked your four questions, I guess. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Go ahead, Chris. <sighs> Hey, Richard. So uh, we spoke recently uh, in a space where uh, you, you had mentioned uh, people's uh, security clearances could be found online. And we went into that discussion and I pointed out that that's not true. Um, so I wanted to kind of. Uh, uh, so once uh, we had that space, I had several people uh, recommend uh, this thing called Mirage Man to me and I went and watched it. And me being an Air Force veteran, <clears throat> I, I found some things interesting. I, it's weird how, like, in that documentary, you probably have already talked about this, uh, but I'm new to this. When you talked to that documentary, it was uh, you were actively trying to do counter intel where you were trying to direct him. Uh, I think it was Benowitz. You were trying to convince him that it was UFOs and aliens because, you know, obviously there's probably... Uh, secret projects going on of human tech and you know we don't want our adversaries finding out about it so you put on a facade you know you convinced them hey yeah this is definitely ufos or whatever that's my take from it so why it seems like that's what you're still doing like i feel like you're still in character and i don't understand why you're doing that because i mean the things you're saying like jeremy or osiris pointed out earlier you made a claim online saying that you know about NDAs and stuff, and he actually was 100% right, uh, and I can back that up. So I'm just trying to figure out, like, are are you doing this for fun or is this like a hobby? Because I know I, I do know that some people that do what you've done have a hard time checking out and like n not continuing to do this type of thing. So at what point did you go from Benowitz trying to convince him of a lie that he believed in? to try to protect, you know, national security secrets to now it's just full blown aliens everywhere. What, what, at what point did we make that switch? I don't know what you're talking about. you you sound a little, uh, out of it, uh, by these uh, wild accusations you made. And, Ed, <clears throat> the, the question about the security clearance, or, or I guess you're talking about, uh, what somebody said about, uh, that the uh, the information has to be declassified. That's absolutely false. That's false, one hundred percent. I sat in a damn uh, skiff with DoD IG, and they explained it to me. And that's not what they explained. So let's move on to okay. the next question. Uh, then, no, 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 that's that's a good question. Because uh, so if you did sit in that in that do that uh, that DoD meeting. You know, it, it was fully at Grush's meeting with the DODIG. So if you met with them under the same premise, we can actually fool you that. Because we did that with Grush, and we got results back. So if what you're saying is true, and you did have that meeting, then we can fool you that. And I think that's what we're going to do. So Ooh, what happens? Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't care. I don't care. Next question. Okay, yeah. Next question. Move on. Okay, go ahead, Spiritual Freedom. Spiritual, I can, I can, okay, go ahead. Can, go, can I go for the next guy? You want, I need like you five want, minutes. To, you want me to recycle you? No, well, I'm just, I'm just busy right this minute. Okay, can I go okay. for Fletcher? Yep, yep, got you. Go ahead, Fletcher. Thank you. Um, yeah, so my question, well, first of all, I wanted to say, you know, I see a lot of, like, trying to poke holes through people in this, uh, eat this type of community a lot, and I just think it's sometimes unproductive, so I just wanted to say that, um, but my question was about Tonopot, um, I've been around there, um, a lot, I've spent a lot of time in the area, and it's kind of in my backyard, so I'm just kind of curious what's going on out there, I know the sign says, home of the stealth and they've got the stealth fighter on the you know on the thing but i'm just kind of curious um and then my my other question was about um have you heard anything about ley lines raising the earth's magnetic field any of that kind of cool stuff to prevent catastrophe 
first of all, Tonopah, uh, when I was out there, it was called Tonopah Test Range. Now it's called Tonopah Air Force Base. Uh, they do um, research and development on not just aircrafts, uh, but other things. Uh, San Diego National Laboratories has a, a major facility out there where they um, are conducting research and development into all sorts of different things, class, classified special access programs. Uh, but I think in 92, um, I became an Air Force Base. So it's Tonopah Air Force Base now. And that's where the, uh, in the 80s, the stealth, the F-117 was developed uh, tested and um, and uh, it's still stored out there. Some of them are. I think there's six active aircrafts, F-117s, that are still flying. The other the other are <coughs> other aircrafts are stored in uh, hangars out there. So that's what I can tell you about Tonopah. The ley lines. I don't know anything about the ley lines. Thanks. Cool, thanks. Oh. Thanks, Fletcher. That was a great question. By the way, I love ley lines too. So there's a whole topic we could probably do a space on. Uh, spiritual, are you wanting to go ahead and go? Yes, ma'am. Um, appreciate y'all letting me up to speak. Um, so, Rick, I don't know like nothing about the story, man. And this might be a crazy, weird question to ask, and I don't even know if you can answer it. But I'm gonna uh, throw it out there. How much is it fact or fiction about the Emerald Tablets and the Anunnaki? And is our government being ran by a shadow alien race? No, nothing about it. I know nothing about it. I've, uh, I think Linda Howe, you need to ask that question. Linda Howe, she's really into that. And uh, I'm not. I, I have no idea of anything uh, relating to the Anunnaki. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Hey Ocean. Oh, hey, Rick, how's it going? Hope you guys can hear me. I'm on a computer, and I don't usually use my computer, but the, my yeah, my phone wasn't working. My question was, if you've ever heard of, uh, was it Project Preserve Destiny? That was one that I heard the other day, and I'm not sure if you've ever uh, heard this project before. No. I, I saw it. Somebody posted it, and then there was some um, something about what it was, but I don't know anything personal about it. Okay, cool. I'm trying to put my hand down now. I'm going to do some digging. Maybe I can find some more information about it for us and maybe link it to some other uh, operations or projects okay. or something. Hey, Jay, Jess, go ahead. Okay, so uh, hi, Rick. Um, I'm wondering regarding on the job, is there any circumstance where you have to reveal that you're on the job? Okay, say that again. Like when if you're working, working a job, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Or, I mean, no, if I was if I was working in a in a uh, a covert position with OSI, I wouldn't I wouldn't tell people that I w was on you know working in a covert position. But if I if I was official duties, I would show my badge and credentials. We had a badge and, and OSI credentials where I'd show people identifying myself as a you know, was I agent and I'm here to investigate something. So yeah, I would but have are to. Are there any like circum sorry, are there any circumstances where you'd have to like if even if you were covert, like you'd have to like uh, reveal that you were working. Well if you conducting an, if I was conducting an investigation, <clears throat> yeah, I would I would have to. Uh, but if I was undercover uh, or, or working on some some secret operation? No, I wouldn't have to. There wouldn't be any reason why it would jeopardize my safety or the security of the uh, the mission. No. So there's really no circumstances. I'm just also wondering, like, considering this topic seems to be uh, very hush hush and top secret. How is it? Like, did you get permission to come out? Like, how is it you're talking about? such a uh, uh an explosive topic with the general public um were you assigned to do this like did they say it's okay like were they happy um 
that you're coming out with this information. Um, so, yeah. You mean now? You mean what I'm doing now? Yeah, now. now. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> I've been doing this for, <clears throat> well, the first UFO convention I spoke at was 2004. So for 20 years, I've been doing this. And there, there were a few times where uh, I was contacted by, I'll say, the authorities and told that I went too far in something. And, uh, you know, not to talk about this or not, not to talk about that. And I said, okay, I won't. And, but other than that, um, nobody's, nobody's told me not to. Um, there, there, were, uh, there are people within the government that questions why I'm doing it because they're saying I'm giving too much information. But, uh, you know, unless I know that it's a special access program and I'm jeopardizing national security, I'm not going to, I'm going to talk about it. And, and nobody's given me instructions. The only person giving me instructions is me, Richard Doty. I control so myself. Nobody else is controlling me. Well, what's your motivation for doing it? Is the teacher in you? Is it like, what's the motivation? I'm just as determined to get disclosure out as other people. I'm trying to, at my very best, to facilitate disclosure. What I know and what I think the government should be telling us. And they're not. And I would love to see some form of disclosure. I don't think we'll see everything, obviously, but I, I hope and pray that we, we get disclosure uh, in my lifetime. That's why I'm doing it. Thank you, Rick. Just to update the lineup so everybody knows where they are, I've got I'm Not Here Next and then Kevin. And then our salon, a.k.a. Andrew, Unconventional, and Tony. So unless, uh, and then Larry, I'll, I'll put you after Tony, okay? So I'm not here. Go ahead. You're here. <laughs> Hi. <clears throat> Hi. Um, uh, I just wanted to ask, um, and it's a, a very simple question, and it requires just a yes or no answer, uh, if that's okay, Mr. Doty. And it's a pleasure to speak to you this evening. Uh, and thank you for, for having me. Um, but I was just wanting to ask, um, apart from what you're telling us and what you're saying, is there any unimpeachable evidence that would corroborate or prove any of your claims? Does any evidence like that exist yes or no you mean you know evidence that's a that's a pretty broad something that you can show i don't me, i don't, tell I don't me about think, just actually I don't show think, me uh, that proves any of of how how claims I can to be respond, true is there anything like that evidence uh, other people's cooperation yes uh, absolutely no, no, not ap apart from what people are saying i'm not saying about what people are saying or what they're telling us what you can show us physically unimpeachable evidence that would prove any of your claims does anything like that exist you mean you mean documents or you mean uh, you want and if you want a ufo in an alien body no i can't there are documents i can't go I can't. there are documents yeah, there's many documents out there and you can't i can't go i've read the documents I can't my go. Second, Many my second follow-up follow question would be. Now, listen, listen, I'm talking now. If you want evidence, you need to do a search. You need to, be in, need to follow uh, Charlie So. He's a guy on the Internet that can dig up things. He's dug up documents. He's posted documents pertaining to classified programs of exactly what I was talking about. Now, as far as the, the hands-on material, I can't bring the, the material from Area 51 or wherever it's stored out and say, here's what I'm talking about. So that's not a rational question to ask. That's not going to happen. All right, Thanks, next uh, go ahead, Kevin. You're next. All right. Let, let me jump in. I'm sorry. Uh, just the, I understand the questions, but if you really consider the history of ufology and all the stories and all the people and all their 
claims that you know what true or not there there no one has ever provided evidence in the history of ufology direct evidence of an actual alien or an actual ufo that's been verified so it's not like rick's the only one so i don't understand why people want to just go after rick when for 80 years people have been telling these stories so rick's just sharing his experiences it's your choice if you want to believe him or not amen okay go ahead kevin Okay, thank you very much for giving me the chance to speak. Um, Rick, um, I know you've been going through and doing a lot of um, discussions, and thank you very much for it. I know it's very difficult. Um, I did want to ask you, there's been a lot of um, people trying to make amends for you know past things and stuff lately, especially the last couple of weeks. I, I'm not asking you that type of thing, but um, are there any things that you would have liked to see gone better in your past um, when you were rolling out any kind of evidence or, um, and yes, I do think that eyewitness testimony is evidence. Um, and yes, whenever we do find artifacts and toys of, of from aliens, uh, the government does snatch it up just like mom and dad would taking dangerous things from us when we were children. Um, so, but are there any things in, in the past that you would like to have seem done a, a different way or a better way oh absolutely yeah hindsight's always twenty twenty, and during my time in i i wished uh i would have challenged the uh operational plans of not just the benowitz case but other cases uh if i knew uh then what i know now but um uh, i wasn't in a position to do that there, there was a there was a uh, a remedy that we could do during that time period where if, if an operational plan uh, wasn't something that we wanted to do or could do uh, there, because these plans were done in, in Washington and they sent them down to the field and they said, okay, here's what you're going to do. And, but, but there were things that I, I didn't, I felt that couldn't be done at the local level. And I'd go to my boss and I'd say, listen, let's fill out this form. We had a form. I think whatever it was, 37 or something, which which uh, allowed us to make recommendations on an operations plan and to send it back up to get approval. Uh, and, and I just wished, and there were some times that I'd read and do something that I realized, God, I wish I didn't have to do this. Uh, so, yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. Here's your lineup, guys. Arcelin, you're next, then AKA, then Andrew, Unconventional, Tony, Larry, John Strader, Kronos, J. Just, and the Unconventional. Arcelin, the stage is yours. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Arcelin. I basically talk about the new Earth um, and just the vibration, the Schumann frequency that's changing in this Earth right now. Uh, there's a different frequency. There's a different type of vibration in the Earth right now that that's changing. Um, that being said, I'm saying this is because a lot of people are starting to see synchronicities and it's happening a lot at the same time. I myself have seen UFOs. So um, for the people that don't believe in it, um, I pretty much didn't really believe in it until I actually saw them. And I was kind of shocked because I'm like, what is going on? So I live in Toronto, um, specifically Scarborough. If you know where that is, it's a part in Toronto. And I was one day just laying on the grass at night and I started seeing like a line of these um, UFOs starting to move. And very definitely here. And the government is actually telling, the government has told us like last year, they've told us that on these objects in the air, they actually exist and they're here. Um, now I don't know. And if you read Behold the Pale Horse from William Cooper, guys, that book has so many gems where he talks about how these guys actually have been hiding. But I promise you, this is very, very spiritual. My friend has actually seen dream. He has a, he had a dream on UFOs. UFOs. So I'm telling you right now, this is much more spiritual than we think with this new earth vibration. Everything, the frequency of the earth is changing and we're going to start. Thank you. Arcelin, did you have mm -hmm. a question? Do you have a question for Rick? <laughs> <laughs> did you have a question, Arcelin? Um, 
Oh no, no! I just wanted to give a confession, but that's about it. I, I, I I'm sorry. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, uh, AKA. Thanks for waiting. Oh yeah, no problem, Ivrick. Um, question about the uh, the Saint Augustine uh, alleged crash um, that may have been part one of three that occurred in forty seven. Um, Art Art Campbell wrote a book uh, called "Finding the UFO Crash at Saint Augustine." Um, where they recovered material um, and ran isotopic metal analysis on it uh, of the honeycomb stuff that they brought up that looks very similar. And there was a correlation to this site specifically in Diana Pasolka's first book where her, Tim Taylor, and um, Gary Nolan visited the site and also pulled some material back. Curious if that was this involved, was this site part of what occurred in 47, one of the three craft that were wrapped uh, or were reported uh, during Roswell? Okay, what I was briefed on, <clears throat> there was two crash sites. Uh, there was a um, the crash in Corona, New Mexico that was found by the archaeological team. The debris field off the antenna of that craft was in the Brazil field. Uh, a second craft, we think at least the briefing said, was the same exact craft was found in 1949 uh, out there near uh, the plains of San Augustine up near Palona Peak. Uh, so that's that's the two that I know about. Uh, now, some say that the debris field was a, another crash site, but I think the government considered that just part of the corona crash. So that's, that's what I know. Rick, that's what I know. Okay, because... Quick question. Let me interject real fast. Sorry, guys. Uh, when you got your briefing, I believe it was 79, did, at the end of the briefing, did they say, now you will not discuss this briefing with anybody, even anybody in this room, or later on at some point in your career or afterwards, were you able to discuss your experience with the briefing and others, in other words, have a conversation with others about your briefings? Yeah, the... Uh uh, yeah, the course is, it was a special access program in 1979 and they, you, you sign the forms and so forth. Uh, and, but because of the, because of the wide nature of the investigative process of extraterrestrials, it didn't happen in one little corner of one little space in one little piece of land. It's happening all over the place. So there's, at one time I knew there were 122 uh, OSI agents briefed into a, to the same program that I was briefed into, and, and we were considered what what we referred to in the system administratively as a nine Q, and so we knew the story. And so on a number of assignments, where we call them TDYs, temporary duty assignments, we would team up with these other agents that had the same clearance that we did, and we sometimes talk about what kind of briefing they got. And lo and behold, they all got this exact same briefing. Plus, there were colonels and commanders and other people that got the same clearance. We were at a UFO convention in 2010. Uh, that's where uh, Richardson spoke. Uh, uh, so, of course, he's dead now, but he was an OSI agent talked about the incident, the uh, abduction case, or the incident happened on about a test site that he that he uh, was involved in involving a staff sergeant Hartnell, and there were a number of other people there, OSI and Air Force Intelligence, a couple from Navy from the Navy, a, a Naval Investigative Service, well, Naval Criminal Investigative Service. It used to be called just Naval Investigative Service, and we we talked about the subject. We talked about briefings and so forth, and they got the same briefing as I did. So I think there was just one major briefing. Because everybody seemed to got, have gotten the same exact briefing that I got. Thanks, Rick. How many of those guys would you guesstimate are still alive that that you know personally had the same briefing that you believe that you had? And do you think any of them would ever give any kind of indication to verify or vouch for what you've told us? Oh, I think, well... <laughs> I hate to say, keep going back to UFO conventions, but uh, many of them spoke, uh, others spoke, uh, and uh, although their stories might have varied from me, they had their own experience 
uh, you know, if they weren't standing next to me, they're not going to verify exactly what I did or, or during my investigative process. Uh, now, everyone that was like the 16 that was involved in the Paul Benowitz case, I don't know. Uh, there are probably some of them that, that are that passed away. I know there was three senior guys, two, one from NSA and one from DIA, probably. I mean, they were in their probably 60s then in, in 1980s. So you're talking 40 years later. I, I doubt if they're still alive. But I don't know. I haven't. I, I, but there are some in the advanced working group and some and, and some other friends I have that. Uh, but they said, you know, I, I've invited many. And there's there's a couple guys in this space right here, right now. Two, three, excuse me. There's three of them who uh, one is still in intelligence. The other two retired like I did. But after me, I think probably in the mid 90s. But they don't want to come on this site and get blasted and called lies and told you're you're crazy, you're making it up, you're you're delusional, all these things. I don't give a crap. I'm going to say my piece. If you don't like it, hey, don't listen to me. <laughs> you know, go someplace else. But these guys, they don't want to get harassed like I get harassed. And there's a lot of people out there like that. You met a couple at a UFO convention that says, I'm not going to go up there and say what I know. So that's that's the way it is. If they want to come up and talk and answer questions and they want to appear in, in a public forum, hey, go at it. But I've done I've been doing this for years and I don't really care about what other people say about me. And I think that's a great attitude to have. Thomas, I've got you on the list. OK, go ahead, Andrew. Thank you. Yes, no problem. Thank you. Can you hear me? Hey, great. Yes. Perfect. Um, Hey, Rick, appreciate you coming on here and uh, appreciate you uh, tolerating and pretty much knowing you're going to come under fire and you still come out anyways. Uh, I know it's not easy, but um, my question was, and I don't know if you've touched on this in previous spaces um, or if you can even touch on it, but uh, one of the f more fascinating rabbit holes I've been down, and you said that you were read in pretty much from Roswell on, uh, it was a four-hour YouTube video, and I've Listen to all four hours, but there's a transcript of the um, Roswell, supposed Roswell alien interview with a Matilda McDonald McElroy military nurse um, that supposedly had a telepathic interview with this alien, and she was the only one that could speak with it. I, I guess the entity's name was Errol, but was curious to hear if, if you've heard anything about it, what your thoughts were, or uh, any comments. I, I heard that. Uh, story, but I I don't know anything more about it than what was told. I, I don't. I'm not gonna. Uh, I, I've never had an ac ac access to anything like that, and I've never read anything in any kind of government document. So um, it's whether it's true or not. I'm not gonna make a decision there or, or state. Thanks, Rick. Just to the people that are down requesting, just hang in there. I'm going to keep recycling, okay? Uh, go ahead, Unconventional. Hey, hi. Thank you for your time. Hey, Ricky. This is your boy from uh, Ivory Coast again. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good, man. Thank you. Um, I have a quick question. I mean, I have a lot of questions, but I'm just going to ask one because I see a lot of people here. So, um... If NHI are real and are here, as like many people say, right? That means the government is lying to us, right? That means the, like the Pentagon, ARO, US Air Force, Navy, NASA, Elon Musk, and all the US president are lying to us. So if NHI are real and they're here and all these people are lying, on like uh, in the reality that we all share i mean there's a problem there so what do you think like what entity or what what person can come who can come forward with like a statement saying yes nhi are real and people will actually take it for what it is like the president the the i mean who who can come forward and say hey this thing is real without showing us anything and people will believe like in your opinion. Well, you're right about who's, uh, 
not telling us the truth. The government's not telling us the truth. There's people out there that are, used to work for the government, myself and others. And uh, so we try to, we, we come out and we're trying to tell what well, the, the public, what we did and what we knew. And how were we treated? Well, you can see how we're treated. So um, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Pandora's box, so to speak. Uh, the government, I know, is lying. Uh, Sean Kirkpatrick was a spokesman for Arrow, and he there was one much, much said or much written by him that's truthful. I mean, there's people coming out of the woodwork, Chris Mullins and, and all these other people saying there's not any truth to what uh, Sean Kirkpatrick wrote in his Arrow report. So, uh, and but we're out here trying to say, you know what? It It's true. Everything is it is true. The government is lying to us. Now, I don't expect the government to come out and give information on everything pertaining to UAP or UFO contact, anything that's already given to uh, in a special project program to a contractor through DARPA that's being reverse engineered. We're not going to hear about that. We're never going to hear about that. That's going to be out there uh, and, and kept secret. But they at least can admit to us that we, the United States government, and maybe other countries, have had contacts with extraterrestrials. That would satisfy me, and I know it would satisfy almost everybody in this room. Thanks, Rick. Go ahead, Tony. Hey, Rick. Um, I have always been curious about the term crash site. Uh, you see it a lot um, in different documents, you know, unclassified documents or uh, uh, or FOIAs. Sometimes it's not clear. I was wondering if there are different units and different terminology that you guys use in intelligence to de to delineate between normal, you know, like normal crash sites and, you know, in NHI crash sites because sometimes it seems like they're sort of intermingled or you not necessarily know the difference does that make sense like if, if you're reading a for you and it says you know people will uh, bring those forward you don't know it's not very clear whether whether the crash crashes what the crashes actually are or or if there's different people dealing with them you know if the f-35 crashes is that the same crash crew you know recovery crew that you know what i mean does that make sense yeah yeah i understand what you're saying uh, no, the at least in what, when I was in, and I think it's still today because uh, Grush and some others alluded to this. There's a special team that responds to crash sites uh, of of UAPs, and they're called the S DART Special Down Aircraft Recovery Team. And uh, so that was the same team when I was in and I believe it's the same team now that's going to be different from if a United States Air Force plane crashed somewhere uh, that's a different uh, a team that would go to recover that now I think the only difference and I don't know that I, I actually don't know uh, the answer to this but what if uh, a UFO crashed into a conventional aircraft uh, such as a F-35 or F-22 or F-16, one of Air Force planes, and they both land in the same area, then who goes out there? I don't know the question. I would, I would suspect that the, the S-DART team, but uh, that's, you know, that's interesting to think about. I've, I was asked that question some time ago, and I, I don't know who would go out if both, both teams would go out, but I, I'm sure it would be a highly classified recovery. All right, thank you so much. Go ahead, Larry. Larry, are you there? Go ahead, John Strader, and we'll jump back to Larry. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Rick, uh, Mr. Doty, amazing space as usual. You have been killing it out here. I really appreciate you making yourself available uh, to everyone on Twitter. Um, I have two questions, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rip through them really quick. So the first one is, you know, you had said you came out in 2004 as Rick Doty uh, and started going to conferences, but did you, intend, did you attend any UFO conferences 
in the 90s, kind of incognito under assumed name or going on any UFO shows with your face blacked out and like voice changed, things like that? Yes. <laughs> yes and no, yes. Okay. Were uh, you Falcon? Were you Falcon? No, I wasn't Falcon. Uh, no, absolutely not. Robert Collins was Falcon in that movie. You're talking about the 1980, whatever it was, 7, 8, uh, 1988 or whatever uh, movie that came out with, uh, no. what's his name from the, from MASH is narrating it. Is that what the one you're talking about? Yes, you got it. That wasn't you? Okay. No, it was Robert All Collins. Right, but you, were, you were lurking around 90s UFO conferences incognito, listening in, just hanging out. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I was at okay. the 1989 conference with Bill Moore made that dramatic speech. I was sitting the second row. Um, I didn't know exactly what he was going to say, but yeah, I was there. And I, I attended several others uh, during that time, but I never spoke, obviously. And very few people knew who I was. Um, the only people that actually knew, I met Wendell Stevens before, and I met Robert Dean. So those two people knew me, and they kind of ushered me in and around, but they would never introduce me to anybody. I didn't. I didn't go at posing as a different person, uh, but but I just never, uh, you know, identified myself in, in, to uh, to the audience. Thank you, uh, Larry. Are you there? Yeah. Thanks. Oh, thanks. great. Go ahead, Larry. Thank you so much. I was I was dozing off and. Uh, I was waking up to your your calling my name, and I was like, "Oh my God, it's too late! I can't come in now." Okay, <laughs> Rick, <laughs> Rick, um, my my desire. I wanted to go back to Jay Just's question, which was, you know, what is your motivation? And I, I was just curious to see what is it that you want from disclosure. I'll tell you what I want. I want not just an an admission. I mean, I, I, that'd be a great start that we're not alone. Um, but I want that that hardware. I want that free energy. Um, what What do you want, Rick, from disclosure? What do you hope will change the world when you, if you were to get the kind of disclosure that you want? Good question, Larry. And I know you know we've talked about this many times. Him and I, we're friends. Larry and I are friends. Well, sort of friends, right, Larry? <laughs> no. Anyways, uh, I absolutely, want, Rick. Absolutely. I know. Uh, I want. I want disclosure. I want the United States government to release every single piece of advanced technology that is not a weapon system or not uh, this jeopardize national security that can help whatever the environment or our medicine that can help people. Uh, uh, walk again on, on spinal cord injuries or anything that can advance us as a human race in the technological area. I want everything released. Now, I understand I don't want the energy weapons or the magnetic uh, energy pulse weapons and all that stuff we allegedly got from the aliens. And no, okay, let's just forget about that. But I'm sure there's a lot of stuff out there that, that, that the government right now, tomorrow, on Monday can release to the public that won't hurt and jeopardize national security. And that's what, that's what I want uh, among everything. I mean, I have friends that are crippled uh, or one guy's blind in one eye and, and all sorts of things that maybe the extraterrestrials have provided us some sort of advanced medical uh, information that can help these people. I know there's, I know there's people out there working on that. And I, 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 I want that stuff released that can, can help society. Uh, thanks for clarifying that, Rick. I wasn't aware that you went that far in, in what you want, and I really appreciate that answer. Let's go to the next hand. Rick, just so you know, we have nine more people in the lineup, and then you can let me know if you want to keep going after that. Uh, so we're going to have Kronos next, and then Brian, Thomas, J. Just, Godhead, Shy Keenan, Nicole, Unconventional, and John. And after John, you can let me know if you want to wrap up. Kronos, go ahead. Hi, Rick. Thank you. Um, in your, just a simple yes or no for this one, um, and then I've got another follow-up real quick. Um, in your past in the, uh, what is it, OSFI or OFSI, um, or in Earth Tech, were you 
ever like a trainer? Did you ever train other new recruits in counter espionage? Uh, no. Um, well, in AFOSI, um, there were newer agents that came in and I would, uh, I wouldn't actually be their trainer. Um, I would be a, um, a system in, in, in doing their job and learning the trade, so to speak, but I wouldn't be classified as a trainer. And when I worked for the uh, Institute for Advanced Studies, Dr. Pearl, I wasn't, no, I didn't supervise anybody. Uh, my direct supervisor was Dr. Putoff. I worked directly for him on projects uh, within the lab. But but no, I was I was never a trainer. All right, thanks. And then the other question, kind of a follow up. Um, what is your current business relationship or just relationship in general with Eric? I, I know that you guys seem pretty close. He usually he'll lead you into questions or lead you into certain things. So just wondering. We're friends. I'll leave it at that. I can, I can speak to Eric. I've known Eric since around mm, 2014. So some of us have been around for quite some time in ufology. Um, and so there's been a long standing friendship with many of us, if that helps at all. Yes. Thanks, Vinny. You're welcome. Go ahead, Brian. Hi, Rick. How you doing? Good, Brian. Thank you. I, I first want to just advise a lot of listeners who are, who are hell bent on trying to trick up Rick in catching him on something. I, I think that it's important to take things that he says and do the research yourself. If there's something of interest, he says, go on your computer, tap a few keys for 10 minutes, go talk to somebody, try to corroborate something. It's not worthy of just one person saying something and then criticizing them if you don't believe them. Uh, I just wanted to say that. Um, the, other, the other thing I wanted to ask, I don't think I've ever asked you this. I, I don't think I've ever heard your complete take on the mill lab phenomenon. Uh, I've spoken to quite a number of people who have had uh, military abductions um, and taken to military facilities. And sometimes they describe um, people that look like they're in Air Force dress blues during the during the um, abduction. Are you aware of any program that was ever built within that range of, of, uh, of an operation? I know that, uh, for instance, Jim Semivan has acknowledged it. Go right ahead. Thank you. Yeah, Brian, I, I know of that program, but um, it's as far as I know, it's so classified. Thank you. Go ahead, Thomas. Hi, Rick. Good to talk with you today. <clears throat> I heard you say, or I thought I heard you say, that when you were at the IG office, that someone there told you that there is a classified Condon report. And my question for you is, do you have a specific suggestion on how the public could file an FOIA request with a specific department or division in the government to see if we can get a copy of that report? It's a good question, Thomas. Yes, uh, there were a number of people. I, 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 I'm repeating other people on, on the classified condom report. Um, Wendell Stevens spoke about that many, 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 many times it, it, when he would be among people uh, th that subject would come up with the condom report. When the re condom report came up, Window will always say, you talking about the unclassified one, right? And people would say, uh, yeah, the, the unclassified one. one. Um, what is there? A and then Window would go on to a dissertation about the classified report that was only given to uh, the air, uh, air staff within the Air Force. Uh, so that's my take on the classified report. Now, later on, um, a certain colonel uh, who is still alive talks about the classified condom report that was only given to certain people within the air staff. And the, con I guess the classified condom report, although don't quote 
me exactly on this, but uh, what they they said, and I'm listening to the conversation, is that it pertained to the uh, classified uh, pro, uh, uh, the classified part of Project Blue Book. So that's that's the explanation I can give you, Thomas, on on the classified. I'm 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 pretty sure that there is a classified because the pe people are talking about it would know. And uh, although I I wasn't around back in those days, but I I think that there is probably one. Now, where would you find it? Um, you know, I know you know of the U.S. Air Force Historical Research Center at Maxwell Air Force Base. There is a special uh, part of the library down there that is uh, that contains, I'm not going to say classified, but sensitive documents that takes a lot to get access to. In fact, you can go into a one room and, they, and there's somebody that stands over you while you get access to it. I don't, I, I'm sure you've been there, so you know how that works. But that's that's where I would start. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Jay Just. Jay, are you there? Yeah, yeah okay. sorry. I hear you. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm hearing today, we were talking about stories today, and um, Willie Streeper, who has an, uh, an implant, says that his he used to hear um, voices through his implant and um, they used to happen with his stories now he doesn't hear them and then there are some experiencers who are told that disclosure uh, should happen they believe they're told disclosure should happen and they're kind of given a task to do it do you know anything about this like a war between two different NHI and what what about uh, future humans involved in all this? Is there anything about that? Can you comment? No, I don't know anything about any wars between the two. I mean, I, I've listened to many, many people, Randy Kramer, uh, talk about it, but I, I, I never had any um, information, never saw anything, any kind of classified documents to answer either one of those questions. I, I don't know. What about like the the there were some I don't know if I've asked you this before but uh, there were some theories about future humans uh, and different timelines uh, and that this was part of the phenomena. I you know I I know what Linda Howell has talked about so I think that'd be a good question for her. <laughs> But I don't know. I don't know anything about it. I wouldn't know anything about it. Okay, go ahead, Godhead. Thank you. Hey, thanks. Um, just wanted to say if, if anybody else is trying to put Rick on the ropes, uh, give it a rest. We've heard enough of that today. <clears throat> um, and all this about physical evidence and whatnot, I would like to know if Rick has had a fantastic dream, um, some kind of visionary experience. Maybe the the astral has pulled you um, at some point. And, um, yeah, I'd love to hear a little detail about that. And then um, just if you, as a small follow-up, do you consider astrology um, important? And, and would you let me do a, a free reading on you? Because I, I think you'd be a fascinating individual to have a look into it like that. Thank you. Okay, dreams. <laughs> There's one particular dream that I had uh, many years ago that I still think about. I mean, well, I, I remember. I shouldn't say think about it. I remember it. And it was a uh, dream after I interviewed Myrna Hansen. And uh, some, some out there know who she is, Myrna Hansen. Uh, she was a the one that uh, Dr. Heineck and, uh, and Leo Sprinkle brought into the Benowitz case. Um, and she was an abductee, and, we, and the, the government did a lot of things to, to prove or disprove her. But I was sitting uh, in a room listening to her. There was actually another agent, a, a, one of our psychologists, who was interviewing her. I wasn't interviewing her. I was sitting in the room when this was when she was being interviewed. 
um, and um, she relate she was relating her her story, and <clears throat> she talked about uh, laying on the table and seeing these vats uh, of human embryos. She said. <clears throat> And that kind of struck me. Um, I, I, I wasn't married back then. I didn't even have children or anything like that. But I had a dream after that of me being in that table and these these looking at these vats, but they didn't have embryos in them. They had aliens in them, and the aliens would jump out of these vats. And, and that's the only dream I can remember that had anything to do with 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 my duties um astrology um <laughs> i've had two people try to read me and it didn't work out very well so um i i'm not necessarily a believer i don't want to say that too loud because my wife is and she's in another room uh she is but uh i mean i read the chart for the day i was born in february so i'm an aquarius so aquarian so i'll read what it says but i don't know that what my chart said ever came came true so i'll just leave it at that it's the dawning of the age of aquarius okay Shantina, go ahead <laughs> I was just humming away that too when you were saying it. Hi, Eric. Much respect. My head is lower than yours. I have a question. Is there someone in the field you would love to work with? Is there someone in the field right now that I would love to work with? Yeah. Is there like a project you'd love to be on or, or, or a person you'd still yet to meet or love to work with? Um. I'd probably love to work with, um, well, people that you wouldn't even know. <laughs> there, there's a couple people that I've met um, yeah. th that have unique abilities. Uh, Eric's one of them. I mean, Eric, he's a very brilliant person. He's uh, wonderful, yes. I've, I've known him for a number of years. But there's another guy by the name of Charlie So, and Charlie is not known to everybody. He's, a, he's probably one of the... Um, most brilliant computer whiz I've ever met. If oh, if wow. uh, and he actually worked uh, for me here as a researcher uh, some years ago when I was writing wrote, was writing a manuscript. Uh, and anytime I ask him for and this is five four or five years ago, anything I ask him about the computer, he knew he could find things in there that I wouldn't have. Never thought that was in. I love those techie heads. I do love them so much. Websites that were just full, full of information, and um, and so I, uh, he would be one, uh, Charlie, and and then um, and Eric. I think those two. Uh, there's a there's a scientist that I that I uh, knew worked for San Diego National Laboratories. He retired now. Uh, I worked with him on a project out at Nevada test site many years ago, and um, he's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant person. Has all sorts of uh, wisdom, words of wisdom uh, to portray, and uh, he's a he's a fun guy. He's up there in age, but he would be another one. Brilliant, thank you. Thanks, Shai. Go ahead, Nicole. Hi, everybody. <coughs> Hey. Uh oh. I, am. Uh -oh. <laughs> I know, I know. Rick, oh my God, people ask so many good questions like John and Brian and Tom and some others. So I actually have two questions or maybe just a quick comment and then a question. But so I think it was John that got, to, got you to talk about um, UFO Live 88. And no, you're not the falcon, you're the sparrow. So you're the sparrow. <laughs> and then you mentioned that Bill Moore, you were at the conference that Bill Moore, like, you know, Bill Moore did Bill Moore. And you were that close and like, 
did he actually like call you out by name in that conference? And then I was wondering, in my head, didn't had Linda kind of exposed you at that point, but not by name as well, but she had sort of like put some pressure on maybe outing you? And then yeah. I'll do my second question. <laughs> yeah, she did. She she did. And 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 the 1989 convention uh, with Bill. Bill had called me um, a few weeks before and said, "Are you going to the UFO convention?" I said, "Eh, my." He said, "I think you should go. I'm going to give a speech." And I said, "Oh, great, Bill! You're going to give a speech." <laughs> uh, little did I know what he was going to talk about. And he didn't tell me what what we were, what he was going to talk about. Well, but we got there the day I think the day before. We both of us did, and we stayed at the same same hotel. Uh, and so um, we had dinner that night, and he he kind of alluded to what he was going to say, but certainly not in a descriptive way. He 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 gave the the lecture, but I, I said, well. Why are you going to do this? He said, I want out. I want totally out of this. I said, well, you already are, Bill. He said, no, no, I want to put all the dots on the I's and cross all the T's. And I said, oh, okay, whatever, Bill. So then we went there and he went there and, and he, uh, yeah, he, he, well, he, um, he politely outed me. <laughs> He, he didn't do it in a very, and not in a derogatory way, but he did. I mean, if you go back and listen to this transcript of the, and it's online, and uh, I think Tom has it. And, you know, but he, he said his piece. But what he said and how he said it upset 99% of everybody in that audience. They got oh, I know. Like, three. that's when... When you do watch it, like, you see people, like, you said you were in the first three rows. Well, you see, like, the first five rows, like, jump up out of their seats. <laughs> so, I mean, did anybody know you there enough to be like, oh, my God, Rick, <laughs> like, turn to you and be like, eh? Because I know you said you kind of got out of there kind of quickly, too, or you've told me that before. Yeah, but. I did. I did. Uh, Wendell Stevens was, I think, the only one at that time that actually knew me. Uh, and he wasn't, he was sitting right next to me. Uh, he was sitting uh, some distance in front of me. Um, actually, the person that was there with me was my brother. And, uh, but, you know, I got up and left. And because I, I thought for sure they were going to find Bill and, and hang him. You know? <laughs> it seems that way. Like when you watch, watch it, like keep, and I think that's what people don't understand. Like we, we see these dramatics or we hear these dramatics play out on, you know, Twitter spaces even now today. But, like, back then, like, for that to happen at a conference, like, it was just kind of berserk. So I just wanted to parallel that maybe a little bit, like, back then to now, like, these sort of outing situations. But I think Linda's part was maybe a few months or even, like, a year before that had gone down, like, where she was just kind of... I don't know, yeah. she's silently, like, pointing the finger at you, or I don't think she had a radio show at that time where she was no. like, no, she there's didn't. a OSI agent who's trying to get me to be an agent, and I turned her down. Like, I don't know how Linda was telling the story, but you hear it. <laughs> yeah, she, she did, uh, and I had, um, she came to a convention in Albuquerque, and um, I showed up, and... Um, her and I had a, um, I think we had a, how can I say it? A very, very face-to-face. -face. Now, if you know Linda, she doesn't hold anything back. And I know you know her. And so she, she confronted me uh, in a way that was um, partly uh, for me to just sit, stand there and shut my mouth and listen to her. And, and the other way she wanted some kind of feedback and i i think we we probably talked for a couple hours at least a couple hours and i think we kind of understood face to face she you know what she never she never uh blamed anything directly on me 
She blamed well, it right. on I mean, the government. She never said Rick Doty did this, like a lot of people hear and other people say, Doty did this, Doty. She says, the government, the government. You were just a messenger for the government, Rick. I know that. And I know you did your job. And she always would say that. But she she didn't ever directly blame me. She blamed the government. And I said, you know, I did what I was told to do, Linda. And I, I followed orders. And unfortunately, was, you were on the other side of it. Was that conference? I think in my mind, that was like the first time she had actually got to see you face to face since you had taken her those documents. Is that? No, 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 no. No. I, I in 83, I, I, you know, she came in. I told this story a thousand times. I didn't yeah. even know what was in those documents till an hour before I showed it showed them to her and right. then I, my job was to maintain um contact with her trying to recruit her and so our contact oh, so you had seen her face to face yeah. like trying to maintain that contact okay but then yeah. i guess to round that out once she wasn't going to become like a I want to say double agent, but I know that's wrong. Once, once she wasn't going to become like an informant, that's when you guys kind of broke contact. And then later she was able to piece things more together and be like, Oh, uh, you know, Rick Doty was also doing other things at this time. So I think if that's how my timeline is working out with this. And actually, I've never met Linda. I just know her through Grant and some other people, but I've never had the pleasure of the one-on-one -on -one with Linda. So, Well, that's a new experience. 